Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to In The Know. Before I introduce you to our amazing speaker today, James, um, I've just got a little bit of housekeeping. We have asked James to join us today to provide some tips and tricks on social media marketing. The topics discussed are an overview of options for you to think about to help you with your independent research and business decisions, so aren't intended as recommendations or advice. Remember as well that your business has its own individual circumstances. The statements and views expressed may not be applicable or suitable for your business. That's out of the way now. Bit of a mouthful, that one. Um, today for In The Know, I'm super excited to be joined by James Gale. James is the founder and director of uh, Shogun Social, um, and he's going to be chatting about his area of expertise, which is social media marketing. Uh, afternoon, James. Thanks for joining us. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I've been really excited to do this. Obviously, I'll make sure to get the studio all booked out and ready to go. Um, so yeah, super interested to talk about. I know we've got a ton of questions, so really curious to dive into loads of them. Amazing. Um, so we've had uh, the pleasure of chatting a couple of times, James, um, about Shogun and what you do. Your mission statement is to help businesses uh, post like content creators. What does that like actually mean? How How, how does that work? Wow, it, it's it's it feels a bit fluffy as a term, but essentially what we're trying to do is allow businesses to stop playing by those secret set of rules we all tend to, to stick to this invisible sense of professionalism. As on social media networks, they tend not to matter as much. Uh, and I kind of every every past experience I had in jobs and agencies and everything like that, uh, for one thing stuck out was social media was never prioritized on the organic sense. And in a post-pandemic world, organic social is now the key to unlocking a an authentic audience that doesn't need to be bought without spend. It doesn't need to be um, leveraged by our influencers. It's something that businesses can just have and communicate with and really provide value to. And not enough businesses actually go out of their way to garner a community like that but then they have to be reliant on ad spend and influences and God knows what other marketing activity. Whereas I want them to focus on, hey, you do realize that you can cultivate a community of your own, post like a creator, and then reap the same benefits. Cut out that middleman. You don't need it. Although they definitely do complement it and accelerate activity though. So yeah, stop playing by the same rule book that your competitors are and do what suits your business. Nice. Nice way of describing it. Um, I'm going to ask you a really tricky question now, which is um, just going back to basics. When we talk about social media, there's uh, so much available out there, so many different platforms. Um, can you give me like a one liner for each different platform and uh, any insights about what it can be used for or, or, or where you think the most value is? Of course. So in terms of the where I think the most value is, starting off in terms of listing priority before we get into the kind of one terms, yeah. um, f from a B2B sense, obviously LinkedIn is the most valuable, mm -hmm. uh, followed next by TikTok. Uh, I'm kind of going down in what gives you the best organic reach because why else would we, we want to get visibility? Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to focus on. So LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, I'd say Pinterest has a very strong standing up there but I'd probably put Instagram just before it, then Pinterest. Pinterest is a funny one because I never really think about it as being a social media platform. Yeah, it kind of is. It's more of a search platform, but we'll, we can mm. kind of get more into that that later. Uh, and then uh, Facebook right at the very bottom. Uh, I don't count YouTube as a social media platform, even yeah. though a lot of people do. It's a search platform, the world's second biggest, actually. So again, we all need to be treated like a search platform rather than anything else. Um, but yeah, in terms of how I see the most value coming out of them, it's definitely who has the most organic reach. So the kings of organic reach are TikTok, LinkedIn, and then Instagram and Pinterest. They kind of swap around. Hmm. And I guess so your one liners for each of them. One liners for each of them is always a tricky one because they a lot of them have so much contained in it. Um, yeah. So so anyway, let's start with Facebook. I'm just going to say everything and the kitchen sink uh, in terms of content hmm. variety. Facebook has a bunch of that and to lean into what Facebook wants these days you're going to need to be doing Facebook live and leaning into Facebook watch so a common theme throughout this whole thing is going to be how much more you need to produce video because yeah. video is preferred by every single platform and that's what we're going to talk about later um, Twitter which is something we haven't talked about that is the water cooler of the internet where news breaks mm. first it is the newsroom um, so you have to be quick and relevant uh, and be able to comment on current events to actually stay relevant. So it's a race to relevancy is Twitter. Uh, Instagram, 
not just aesthetics is the phrase I'd use. Mm. Uh, a lot of people get caught in the trap, especially businesses, of just going, aha, uh-huh, I have pretty product, pretty picture equals engagement. Not anymore. Uh, I wish, I wish it did. It would make our jobs as social media managers so much easier. Um, but unfortunately, no. Uh, Instagram is so much deeper now. Obviously, it wants you to use features like Instagram Live, Instagram Reels being the most predominant one, Instagram Shops, the normal feed and all the types of video that, that lay on that. Uh, Instagram's done a recent update where everything's going to come under Instagram video. So you'll find all of this is going to merge on one tab fairly soon. So that's either going to be an absolute amalgamation or it's going to be finally a place where we can find it all in one place. Hmm. So you'll find hopefully your native video views for all type of different types should go up. Um, but we'll see what that holds. I don't really trust the, the Zuckerberg team, as anyone has over the last, <laughs> last few weeks with all the outages. Um, so we'll see where that goes with that. Pinterest, um, beautiful click-throughs is how I'd sum- summarize it. So in terms of actually, if you get together really good groups of organic pin boards, plus your own original content and mix those together, it's probably one of the quickest and easiest platforms to grow on for relevant search terms. So get your SEO hat on when it comes to Pinterest, because you're going to be optimizing for how people are looking for your type of product. So let's say if you're selling, I don't know, USB microphones, you're going to be looking at phrases like YouTube setups or YouTube inspiration or studio mm. inspiration, stuff like that. And your product needs to be weaved in around those. Uh, and it does have one of the highest and easiest ways to click through out of all the platforms. So from an e-commerce perspective, very, very good. And idea pins are the top mm. thing to use on there at the moment. Is um, do you, Would you say, just thinking about Pinterest, is that a b2c kind of platform or can you use it for b2b products as well because i i in that example you used you talked about microphones which i guess are kind of more generic they're not just for individuals to buy but mm. the way that i see it is often like in buying individual pieces of furniture or artwork or or, or whatever can, can, does it have a, a use case for b2b it can do if mm. i mean it's probably the most heavily towards b2c but what everyone forgets is it's still a platform for people uh, yeah. So I think sometimes people fall into this subconscious trap of going, hmm, if you are B2B, robots only use desktop. And then it's just like, no, because it's still people. So you could you could run a B2B company, but still go on Pinterest in the evenings. Uh, mm. So if you go with a value-led video strategy slash graphic strategy on there, you can actually find to, you'd build a community uh, around your certain product. So let's say if it's us as social media marketers, I'm going to want to double down on vertical video and TikTok style stuff that then educates around social that I can pin together in different ways people can grow. Mm. So that can actually work in terms of finding the search terms around that because Pinterest gives you natural search traffic options. So you can actually find out if people are searching anywhere near your niche. And if they're not, then you can establish whether it's a platform for, for you or not. But if they are, you realize that actually it's probably quite an untapped market considering most people would have counted it out from the beginning. So mm. now you can put together really relevant ways, but um, dedicate to vertical video on B2B if you're going to try and use Pinterest. Yeah, I think it, just what you said there has gone back to, I guess, your core ethos at Shogun, which is you know creating content like creators um, rather than businesses because people mm. look at content as a person not necessarily as a business um yeah. that that and that's that's why I guess you get that value from Pinterest because I'm when I am um, absorbing content I'm not absorbing it as Ellie Weiberg transformation manager at Barclays I'm absorbing it as Ellie Weiberg an individual and so yes. it's just about that that framing and that and that's why you should be creating it a bit more like that in the first place yeah it's everyone especially when this is why having social channels and just posting on them to keep up with the joneses is Mm. going to get you nowhere it's probably has gotten you nowhere uh you need to think about the mentality everyone's on in these individual platforms so pinterest very inspiration heavy it's very um it's future lifestyle kind of thing so you can catch someone with a really nice mentality on there um to actually maybe improv buy a product if it actually really suits them or puts together stuff or actually find a really good loyalist of, of a platform, depending on how you use it. Uh, Cause people use Pinterest in completely different ways. Yeah. But I think things like LinkedIn, for instance, people on LinkedIn are on there for two reasons. One, cause it's the only social platform they can have open at work or two, they're actually motivated and dedicated and want to like progress on there somehow. Um, so either way you're going to catch someone in, in a different mood. So your content framing needs to change slightly, whether it be na- the native like output of it, or it needs to be the captions that you've written. Um, we need to account for every single different piece of mentality people have on it. And if you make that slight tweak, that's how things become more native and people gravitate more towards it. And it's why I asked the question of every 
everyone I ever talked to. So how many businesses do you follow for fun when you get home from work? It's even business owners go nothing. And it's like, yeah, yeah, because once you're not using it for business purposes, no one's making anything to entertain, inspire or educate. Because those are the three core pillars of what anyone does anything. So Mm. that's what we have to keep in mind at all times. Mentality of the platform and entertaining, educating and inspiring. Yeah. And just thinking about the the platforms again, going back to my earlier question, I think um, Ooh, we... And there goes the lights. Oh, and there goes the lights. Excuse me. <laughs> we knew this was going to happen. The joys of being in a in a media studio, which uh, has um, sensors on it. So if you're creating content, make sure your media studio doesn't have light sensors and just stays on your back. See, see very interesting media studio that turns the lights off on you. Um, we we knew that was going to happen, and we didn't even we didn't we I could have thought of something witty to say, and I couldn't think of anything. Um, yeah, just thinking about the the platforms itself, um, you kind of put I guess Twitter and Facebook maybe in the lower end of your kind of spectrum of value, and I think it's really interesting because those are probably the two platforms that you can kind of guarantee that most businesses have. Um, yeah. Whenever you know I'm looking for. Uh, a product as a consumer those are the two tr- tr- platforms that you know they'll have the little icon on their website saying that they have them what yeah. why are people making that mis- mistake what what's why are people seeing the value there when actually maybe that's not where you get the most organic reach there can be tremendous value in both but it mm. can it can depend on a few things one facebook if you haven't already had an established audience so if you haven't been on there in a while as a startup trying to go on facebook right now without spending a penny in ads is extremely difficult you have to leverage facebook groups you have to encourage shares every single post encourage comments every single post and most likely only 10 percent of your existing audience will see your content so if you only have 50 followers only five people are going to bloody see it so it's so so hard to grow Uh, and there's so many different tools they want you to use that it can become very overwhelming and you need a custom strategy just to tackle facebook in itself if you want to get anywhere today as a startup unless you get lucky and somehow go viral which on facebook is not really an option these days um twitter is absolutely something that's i'd say more powerful and you can accelerate more as a startup but the problem is it needs its own dedicated strategy and you need to be on it because the lifespan of an average tweet is 18 minutes so this is not something you can schedule out one tweet a day and go happy days you will grow extremely slowly. And if it's something that you actually want to get new business from, there needs to be a custom strategy behind it of constant engagement, commenting, trying to go into those different people's comment sections, ride their their influence and go, right, can I win the funniest comment? Can I win the most insightful comment? And kind of think of each, each piece of engagement as a competition of can you win whatever badge this happens to be? And can you create then threads of value or loyalists that follow you from these different points of engagement? So Twitter requires so much of a dedication mm-hmm. that for businesses and startups always to go, they're already very established titans. You're so much better off going on something that no one's taking advantage of as much in the, in the form of LinkedIn or TikTok that do genuinely reward you with organic reach compared to Twitter, Facebook, and instagram but not as much these days because of the changes it has recently to keep up with tiktok funnily enough yeah i think it, you you touched on something which we got asked about a lot in in the questions which is about the kind of time commitment for for social media and growing a social media yeah. pres- presence how do you kind of prioritize what is is it the responsibility of one person to grow a social media presence for a business or or it, is it the whole team approach? Like, where, how do you, how do you make that work? Because it, it can be quite an investment, a time investment. I think it's uh, it, we as an agency exist to work wholly on organic social. So yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a full time job in itself, and we're a team of five. Uh, yeah. So th- yes, it it can be someone's one person's job with a particularly good strategy and uh good time allotment for it and also the right platform selected so often people tend to default to either one of two camps either i'll be across everything or no i only play on one platform because Mm. that's what i've heard i'm supposed to do Uh, i opt for a middle ground of going i'm going to choose my top three and then treat them in priority so for instance our, our strategy is led by tiktok then linkedin then instagram in that order Uh, And we actively prioritize the fact that our TikTok content can trickle down towards our other platforms because as a vertical video, that that works. So you can actually then save time by 
natively repurposing in the right ways as long as you not do things like download the tiktoks about the watermarks and stuff which you can just a quick google search um so you know there's stuff like that you can use to work around it but one person's job it can absolutely be if you are a startup founder of one it can be extremely difficult so you can start with a lower amount of social social platforms but again it does depend on what you sell if you're b2c or if you're b2b and what your goals are as a business. If you're mm -hmm. a, a business that's happy to grow natively and just grow at the pace they want to, then you're going to be absolutely fine. And your job is to create an authentic connection with the community uh, and then build that slowly and organically because that's what's the normal way to do things. That's how all creators have done it, just like they all did in their bedroom, one video at a time. Whereas if you have accelerated goals, you'll probably need a larger team to focus on it. And most brands, are now really clocking on to the fact that in a post-COVID world, you absolutely need to have an organic strategy and it probably needs to be the linchpin of your entire strategy. And when we do overall brand, mm -hmm. brand arching strategy, we do actually do it from organic social out. So each and every piece of micro narrative that's posted throughout the week is integrated in other channels. So it, yeah, it's absolutely something that's essential. It can be done as a team of one, but it needs a particular flair and way about it. Yeah, I think along with time commitment there's uh, maybe another question we got asked about is about staying on top of trends and the value of doing that because you see a lot of things going viral because they're particularly funny and they're jumping on mm. other trends and piggybacking on something that's going on on tiktok or, or whatever how do you how do you stay on top of trends and how do you then capitalize on them f for yourself like what's the best approach for that i guess one of the things I like to ask if someone goes, I need to stay on top of trends is why do you want to stay on top of trends? Mm. Is it so you can get reach to sell more products, which normal consumers will see straight through because uh, most people arrive to, arrive to in a corporate fashion and a bit too late? Uh, or are you doing it because you know you can actually add something of value or of, of humor to that trend? Um, there's That's how I'd go about it. Um, people need to come at social media from a completely different angle. When it comes to your organic content and for all you business owners out there this is going to be so counterintuitive but you can't sell the same way you used to i mean not like it ever used to work anyway but it's just a bit like um you have to completely immerse yourself in being essentially a consumer but working under the guise of a brand and those that do that and work natively like that like the say right now on tiktok for instance it's mm. they they complete they're in a different stratosphere compared to everyone else it's because they understood the assignment in a way it's a bit like good if, reference there yeah see um once you start operating in that fashion you're rewarded heavily um but yeah if, if you're just trend hopping for the sake of it then make sure you do it well and you do it funny um <laughs> and you do it on time that can be a big one there are tools that can help you stay on top of it so uh, if all those ios users out there trend talk is one that i'd get um because that can help it uses one it kind of garners a list of current trends but it also uses ai to predict what's next when coming on tiktok and mm. tiktok is where all the trends are coming down from yeah. uh, and anywhere that houses the creator economy so just to add on to this point slightly um, all brands also need to realize when they're picking their social media platforms where the creator economies are. And what I mean by that is what platforms actually give away for people to make their full-time jobs social media. So we're talking YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, TikTok Creator Fund, YouTube Partner Program, Twitch Partner Program. Instagram have only started opening up payment plans recently to, again, make up for the fact they've never given platforms to creators before. Um, so when when trends are going to come from somewhere, they're most likely going to come from those places uh, mm. because people have made it their livelihoods and the community is now strong behind them as well to support them. Um, so yeah, always think like a person at all times. It's very, very tricky to do. But yeah, throw yeah. the rule book out the window and start playing it like this was just your personal profile. Yeah, I I find um, TikTok is a, is, a, is a great one. I just, um, you have to be funny and you have to be, there right then and you but you hear amazing stories of businesses really their businesses totally being changed particularly small businesses through one well-timed tiktok post or, or something yeah. like that it's a really interesting one um what what do you think in terms of engagement and metrics and and, and stats appreciate it will change for different mm. different platforms and, and what you're actually trying to do what your aim is but what it where is where what is actually valuable to track because you get a lot of um, I know what you're going to say to this one, but you get a lot of uh, hype around your follower numbers. Does yeah. that actually mean anything? Surely it's more the actual organic engagement. And if that's it, then what are you tracking? What's the important thing to keep an eye on? 
it can mean something in certain contexts. So for mm. a business, if you're if you're trying to establish credibility, sometimes high followers can make you look more credible, and that's yeah. absolutely fine. Um, but and it can help you with influence and negotiations. The higher your following number is, the more likely that they'll respect you during the negotiation, uh, mm. and they won't try and pull the wool over your eyes and vice versa. Um, so it that can be quite helpful. But in terms of what it actually means to a normal business that doesn't have that in their sight lines yet, it, it means very little. Uh, because mm. you'll see it in your engagement figures. I think in that no, native engagement figures is around 1.17%. So if you have anything above that, that's good, which it sounds very low. And it's because yeah. it is. Uh, and it's because of platforms like Facebook who don't give you much reach at all. Um, so whenever we're looking at if followers matter, absolutely not. And each each piece of content, you should always be asking the three questions, you know, is it inspirational, educational, or entertaining if it's not one of those three then meh but also is this content savable shareable or would i comment on it because that's what engagement in itself actually is mm. is this good enough for me to send it to someone else is it good enough for me to save it for later so i can read it again or is it is it good enough for me to actually go out of my way to write something which just in terms of our own <laughs> <laughs> humans are lazy right if it's so yeah. good that i'm writing something underneath it that's what we should be aiming for every single piece should be under that microscope of those essentially six questions uh and if it's not then reevaluate your content strategy because every piece of content should have that level of care because otherwise no one is going to care yeah we've talked a lot about video content and i know that something you're really passionate about is video content being really powerful how how do you um how do you maximize your content um particularly if it's a video across multiple channels and also what what are your so what are your options if you actually don't like being a video because you get a lot you see a lot of mainly tiktok properly instagram and reels and things like that it's mm. predominantly kind of face the camera stuff every now and again you might get like a nice a nice graphic yeah. but if you're not confident like that how how can you make sure that you're still using those platforms this is a tricky question because I'm always yeah. going. To, I'm always going to say, if you can, please, please, please have a face to your brand, uh, whether yeah. that be a brand ambassador, whether that be you stepping up if you're the founder. Uh, it it in heavily, heavily increases how people like receive your content. So from our personal stats, we've seen a twenty percent uptake every time there is a face in the content, regardless of what the context is, whether it be still mm -hmm. image, whether it be, and as long as it's not a stock image. So if it's one of us, then it's, we see a 20% uptake straight away, regardless of whether it's anything else. So people like people, people buy from people, fundamental fact. But mm -hmm. if, if you can't find a way to get around that, then one of the things I'd say is lean heavily into voiceovers. So when it comes to the, the kind of culture of TikTok at the moment, um, there's, there's two sides. There's the people that lean heavily into story times and stuff like that. And sometimes you, you're going to have to get past listening to your own voice. Uh, because if, if you have a product-based business, let's say if I'm, if I'm selling these amazing Barclays Eagle Labs mugs, uh, then I want to be telling a story while I am kind of circling the product and showing off in different ways, different lights, or even just aesthetically making a nice cup of coffee. Um, it's very much following the science of satisfaction narrative where mm. you know how there's very good like uh, there are very good channels so like, the pool guy on tiktok for instance i follow i just watch him clean pools and he'll just voice it's over what he's doing there's a rug that cleans it. rugs as well that is heavenly it's, it's, incredible it's so all commercial cleaning businesses out there by the way get on that straight away um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's a case of how can i bring someone in with a story with my voice instead of me having to be in it and when you're not in it you can normally be a bit more comfortable with how you're kind of representing the story and mm. whatever you're doing has to kind of capture the eye. So one of those activities would be filling like a, I don't know, a glass with sand and then kind of making a painting or whatever it happens to be. Bring people on a visual narrative while you add your auditive narrative and then you'll be fine. Every piece is storytelling and that it's all mm. micro storytelling. And again, once you're asking those questions every single post, would, would I share it with someone else? Would I save it? Would I comment on it? That's what will help inform each piece of your social strategy and what the overarching goal is as well, because you need to treat your social media Monday to Friday, nine to five, all the stuff you post out every day, that is your EastEnders everyday posting. But in mm. that everyday episode, there is an overarching story that we'll get to at some point, and that is your business goals. So once we think of it in this way, it is much more a TV show, it's entertainment, it's, it's an, almost an opera, 
then you'll mm. find that your stuff is so much easier to ideate and come up with. Um, there's a TikTok formula that we've come up with that is an easy, easy way to just scroll through. So scroll through your For You page and think in uh, audio, idea, and execution. So as you scroll through, look at the audio, absorb it. Can I use it for my brand? Is there any copyright issues? Normally that's on the TikTok natively, it's fine. Um, mm. But analyze the audio, figure out how you can adapt that for an idea of your own that isn't just a hard sell and then execute on that and just trial and error. But those three mm. easy steps allow you to create TikToks essentially from nothing that often you don't actually have to be in or you can just lip sync. So give that a go as well if you're struggling to create content. I, the cynic in me, and you know, this is me probably challenging you a little bit, but the cynic in me says, how much um, ROI am I actually going to get back from social media? Because I mean, obviously this is this is what you do so I'm hoping you have a really strong opinion on this but yeah. you know when I'm thinking when I'm scrolling through my for you page or my Instagram reels or, or whatever um I don't often go onto a page and then um buy from it instantly so where how how how, how am I actually getting real value financial value to my business through it well, Sorry, I often think, question. No, no, it's a good question and something that, that kind of needs to be addressed. Um, can you name me a platform where you're scrolling through and will instantly buy from something? True, valid, very valid. Uh, yeah, it's a case of everyone has this pre preconception about marketing mm. that there is a silver bullet out there, some mm. some ROI strategy, some some kind of fancy workaround or Facebook ads that will give you this instant click through ROI print money formula. Uh, it doesn't exist. And when you put in the effort to actually give value to an audience every single day, and they can tell you're genuine in your intentions, that creates mm -hmm. brand loyalty, that brand loyalty then creates interest in your product. And then that cycle continues, but in a bigger fashion. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way as someone going, can you make any money out of the stock market? Uh, yeah, if you even know what you're doing, or you just take the, the route that I'm recommending and investing in an index fund, shall we say, this is no means financial advice, but it's like compound interest, just to use the general mm. term. It's a bit like, yeah, you're not going to get a return in a month or a week or whichever, but wait two, one, two years, and you're going to be in a different place to anyone else because that's that's just how that, that phenomenon works. Mm. Uh, and every brand that's done it and every creator that's done it, because they're in front of our eyes every day through this little thing here, they will do it every day. And then we still get questions going, can this bring me ROI? Of course. Do you want to put in the legwork for it though? Or do you want to just continue to put money to ads, put money to influencers, put money to email marketing and keep struggling with the older school ways of doing it instead of just investing mm. in the free channel you have right in your hand? That's the way I, rec I recommend it. Because once you start that process, there's no going back. It's just switching that mindset to think about that longer term advocacy rather than that instant yeah, because there is no instant gratification. Yeah. Google yeah. are getting rid of cookies in 2023 and iOS has thrown all Facebook ads into disarray. It's like there is no there's no secret weapon. And even the stuff mm. that used to work is not working anymore. But there's always been a method that works absolutely fine. And it's the stuff yeah. you can make for free. It's really yeah. odd. Um, so so use your free stuff, everyone. I'm conscious we're we're running out of time, which is is literally flown by. I feel like we've only been talking for Ooh. five minutes. But um, just thinking about um, like make, making content, I guess. What would you say is the like core kit list that that any um, business or individual should have when they're thinking about creating content? Is it do you need to have one of these sexy headsets and like a really elaborate setup, or is nope. it just a phone? Is that just a, a phone? That simple. Yeah, I found especially on platforms like TikTok, um, the more overproduced and kind of higher production it is the less views yeah. it tends to get sometimes mm. unless you're already a well-known name which then the the higher kit makes sense if you're starting off from complete scratch you need to operate like all the creators are and all of the people that are, are following you on there are hold up your phone and tell them something of value that's it because you have to start somewhere and then people actually appreciate the progression over time so again it's your overarching narrative just go back and to your favorite youtuber and scroll five years that down, down the line and watch them back in their bedroom and then go, wow, I've loved watching you go from here to here. Yeah. And as a business, you can absolutely garner that as well. It's just as long as you tackle social with genuine intentions as the one platform where you do not hard sell to people, then actually you can build a really nice brand advocacy. And it's mm -hmm. where brand loyalty is built from now on. 
it's it's not like your your old butchers where you can go down and say, oh yeah, that's that's Jeremy. He cuts he cuts the beef every time. Uh, that kind of era is gone thanks to superstores, but it's now just built on a different way. It's built on social, so mm. lean into that as much as possible. And people like seeing that journey, don't they? They you, you genuinely like seeing that. It's growth part and... of the reason they would follow you because it's just another yeah. reason. So yeah, how yeah. can I see these guys get to the next step? Like mm-hmm. that would be really cool for me to see. Yeah. Um, last question for you because we are nearly out of time. Um, in terms of thinking about social really generally, what we, are the one is the one thing that you would um, advise all businesses to start doing on social, and what is the thing you tell them to stop doing on social? Oh well, just oh. for the lights to go out again. Um, <laughs> let me just quickly. No worries. It's it's, it's basically an alarm clock telling us to. Um, it's an alarm clock telling us that we're running out of time, basically. It's telling me to no. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, toolkit. Um, diversify how you're doing your content at the moment. So yeah. um, have a look at what's performing best on each platform. Start socially mm. listening. So go on each platform, spend 10, 20 minutes on it. Actually understand how it works, especially if you're not familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Because if you post without context, it's going to feel out of context. It's just going to feel like it's not supposed to be there. Um and then figure out what what kind of things are performing the best. So video yeah. will be your best friend, obviously, in, on everything. But little things like a carousel on Instagram can't be uploaded in the same way on LinkedIn. That needs to be downloaded as a PDF and uploaded to LinkedIn. So there's lots of different ways to go about it. Uh, but yes, content diversity, always optimizing for shares, saves, and comments, and actually having a strategy in place to figure out what your overarching narrative is for your, essentially, brand extenders. Nice. Really nice. Um, thank you so much, James, for your time today. I can't believe it's been half an hour because that is literally flown. Gone really, and I imagine that there are there's so much more we could have talked about because it's just such a varied um, subject. Um, and obviously, you are quite the expert, so I'm sure you. um, you'll get lots of people asking you questions after this. I imagine. Um, so yeah, th- thank you so much for your time. It's been really, really, really great. Um, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us for this sh- session today. Um, in the chat, there will be a little feedback survey. If you can fill that out, um, it will help us shape our future events program. So please do. Um, and if you've, if you've enjoyed today, then do, um, do uh, follow uh, our events on Eventbrite and YouTube and join them in uh, in the future. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. And thank you once again, James. And uh, we will see you at another Eagle Labs event soon. So thank you. Thank you.